Hey friends, and welcome back. As our Summer Connect program begins to wind down, we encourage you to share what you've been learning with the people around you. So how do you do this? Our next speaker wants to help. Born and raised in the Bronx and now working as a missionary on staff with crew, Tabitha Morales wants to help people from different ethnic backgrounds meet one another with love and grace. Please help me welcome Tabitha Morales. Hello. I wanna to talk to you about your heritage and why your heritage matters. Your ethnic heritage, your identity, all of who you are, God created for you, for his glory. He gave it to you. He gave it to you so that you can be part of his great plan, his great plan to rescue all people. I believe that when we behold God and his heart for all ethne, being all nations, if we behold ourselves, and we understand who we are, where we came from, and if we behold others to whom he actually wants us to go, then we can be most effective in making him famous and glorifying his name. I believe that this word behold, right? When you look at the word behold, it's a word that captures something a little deeper than just seeing. You're perceiving, you're looking into, you're gazing upon, you're almost seeking to understand when you behold. When we behold God, we begin to understand his heart a little bit more clearer. We begin to understand his heart for going to all ethne and why he made us the way that he made us and why he made them, whoever them is to you, the way that he made them. So let's dive in. You probably heard about God's great commission, right? So the God's great commission to us to go to all people, to all ethne, to preach the gospel, to baptize, to teach all nations. And hopefully we're holding that in tandem, right, with the actual great commandment. So it's the great commission to go and to preach and to baptize and to make disciples. And then the great commandment to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself, right? Each of these truths are foundational and are found actually throughout all of scripture. We have in the Christian spaces, we've kind of picked out one or two verses where we're like, yeah, see, it's important to God. It's really all over the scriptures. This is God's heart that we would go to all ethne for the whole world, for all people around the world to know who he is and for us to actually be able to play a part in that. How beautiful is that? But what do we need to know before we go? Can we just go? Can we just pick a spot in the world and go? I think it's really important that we know at least four things before we decide to pick somewhere on the map and go. I think it's important we know the sender. Who sent you? Who do you represent? Who are you being the ambassador for? Secondly, I think it's important we know the message, right? Consider the message. You need to know the message well enough that you could actually adapt it to the people that you're going to that they'd actually be able to understand what you're saying. Third, I think we need to know the people. Who are the people that we are going to? What do they believe? What do they not believe? And then fourth, we need to know ourselves. We must know who we are. Before we go, we must know where we're coming from. Where are we coming from? Think about it. How can we complete the Great Commission without knowing where we come from. We're gonna go somewhere, but we don't even know where we're coming from. And just, when you think about the Great Commission, you hear go to all nations or all the world. Remember that word nations actually is where we get the word ethnicity from. Okay, so it means ethne. So we're not talking about geopolitical locations. I'm not talking about this really cool country in this other part of the world or that great place where they dance awesome, you know, Puerto Rico. I'm not just talking about place, I'm talking about people, right? And oftentimes in Christian spaces, I think we focus on the sender, right? God sent us, go. I think sometimes maybe in certain spaces like crew, we focus on the message. Here's the gospel. This is what it means, right? And then even sometimes we focus a little bit. We try to learn about the people that we're going to go to, especially when we're going overseas. It's almost easy, right? Let's, let's Google. What do they wear? You know, how do they treat women? What are they thinking about this? How do they feel about that? We think about those things. But often we forget to analyze ourselves or to see how do they see me, how I look, who do I represent when I go, or what do, they, what do they think of when they see me getting ready to go. And I think when we ignore who we are or how we're even viewed by others, we can actually do a disservice to the message. We can confuse people, maybe we can go in in a way that's just super hard for them to receive the message. 
So let's dive into what we may need to know. I think it's wise before one makes plans to do anything, to go anywhere, that he or she looks deeply at self. What distinguishes me? What makes me different? Before going to make disciples of all nations, it's good to be aware of what nation or what ethne do I represent? And I know sometimes this can be hard, but stay with me. Where are you from? How do others see you? Throughout scripture, we even see Paul, right? Paul does this. Paul talks about who he is, who he was, where he's going. Whenever he's speaking cross-culturally, right, he does this. When he's speaking to people from a different heritage, think about it. In uh, Corinthians, we see this. Or in Galatians, he addresses them. He's often saying, you know, he's a Jew of the Jews. He's a Roman citizen. He knows where he's a citizen of. He knows his ethnic heritage. He lists out his degrees. He's like, he's not cocky, but, you know, he's got a lot of, <laughs> got a lot of things that he can share about who he is. He's a well-educated, well-traveled person. And so when he's going to the locations, he also knows who he's bringing with him, who he is. What are some ways that others need to know about you? What are some things you need to know about yourself? I think first you need to know yourself historically. So who do you come from? What's your ethnic lineage, your heritage? Why did your ancestors migrate here if they did? What happened after they migrated here? Who are they known as today? What's different from before? Were your ancestors forced to lay down their ethnic cultural identities or did they choose to lay those things down? Why did they assimilate to the new way? When did they claim this citizenship and put down that citizenship? Why, what drew them here? It's important for you to know these things about yourself so that when you go, you have a story. Do you understand? You know your story that you're bringing in with you. You know how they view you. Knowing himself historically, Paul does this. Paul doesn't hide who he was. When he goes to the Corinthians and he goes to the Galatians, he doesn't hide the fact that he was a persecutor of the Christians. He's like, yeah, you know, I killed some of your friends. Sorry about that. Like he's engaging with it. He's confessing it. We even see that in Nehemiah. Nehemiah does that too. You know, when he's praying, he actually confesses the sins of his father, his ancestors. He doesn't ignore what his ancestors did or say, that's not me. That's not today. He embraces it. He says, I know these things to be true, God, of my ancestors. And he confesses those things. What are some things that are true of your history that you need to behold your personal history, your family lineage, maybe your ethnic history, maybe gender, maybe beyond, maybe other identities, maybe as a Christian? When you go to certain parts of the world or to certain people groups, how do they view you as a Christian? What are some things that we need to become more aware of historically as it pertains to our identities? Second, behold yourself theologically. Theologically, I think it's wise that you would do this, right? Because before you plan to preach to all ethne, you need to know what you're going to say, right? What's the message? What am I going? I'm just going to say Jesus loves you, deuces. Like, that's just weird, right? Like, how am I going to talk to people about what I believe, about what I hope they believe? And where are they on their journeys? How do I need to adapt the message so that they could hear Is it in a different language? And it may not even be an actual lingual language, but what are some of the words that I'm using that is not really encouraging or inviting to them to to come into relationship with Jesus? How do I worship God? And do I put that expectation on them? Whoever the them is, when I'm going to preach the gospel, am I also telling them how to worship God? Am I, am, I telling, am I taking my own cultural heritage and putting it on them and saying, this is how we live out our faith? Sometimes there's some truths in those things, right? 1 Timothy 4, 16 says, keep a close watch on yourself and on teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and others, right? This idea of knowing your theological basis. And there are things that all Christians believe that are true, right? How we love, we always love. We all love, we lead with love, we decide with love. We all believe that God is one, right? We know that he is one and yet he is triune. And so 
knowing those things is not changing. There's many, many biblical truths is not changing. But what if from my culture, I know God as father and I know him as father really well. And I can, I can understand that because in my cultural heritage, a father and a child are close and you see that every day. But what if I go to this culture and they're not familiar with fatherhood? They don't quite understand that analogy of God as father. I'm not saying he's not, right? He still is father, but maybe they need to understand him more as creator. Or maybe they need to see him as warrior, one who fights for you. Or maybe they need to see him as lover. He is still all of those things. But how can I understand who God is and translate it without compromising the message, but in a way that they are able to hear and receive the message? Who guides your theology? Who are you learning from? Do you learn the scriptures from people who only look like you? People who only sound like you, have experienced life like you? Are you just regurgitating what you've been told? Do you truly know who God is? Have you been able to engage in the scriptures with someone from maybe a part of the world that you've never been to or have never engaged with others? Maybe someone from the area of the world Jesus is in? Because the scriptures were written all there. And when we look at them through our Western eyes, dare I say, like our eyes on this side, whoever is over here, are we misinterpreting? Are we missing some things? Take a moment to look into the mirror of your life, to self-reflect. What do you currently know to be true of your theology and what could you be missing out on who God is by not engaging cross-culturally over the scriptures? Third, I think you need to behold yourself culturally. So we said historically, theologically, and culturally. Culture can mean a lot of things. And I know some of you are like, seriously, culture, this word, again, okay. Culture, broad word. Wikipedia says it's like an umbrella term, right? It's the customs, beliefs, social forms, maybe material traits of potentially whether it's an ethnic group, a religious group, a social group. So culture doesn't have to just be ethnic or racial culture, right? It could be Christian culture. It could be female women's culture. It could be New York culture. Chia, chia. Nobody from New York. Okay. It could be New York culture. It could be all kinds of things, right? And it's often reflected in maybe your language or your speech patterns, right? You kind of maybe hear an accent from me. You can see me moving my hands a lot. There's things that I'm doing that are already spilling out and telling you, hey, hey, I'm from a certain culture and you may not be there, may not be from that culture. And oftentimes when we think of culture, we get a little scared of the term because we're not quite sure what it means. We're not sure how to cross it. We're not sure how to engage with it. Peter did this. Peter had issues with the Gentiles. Peter had issues with Paul had to confront him about how he lived like this over here. And then he was like this over here. And like he didn't, he didn't quite know how to adapt culturally speaking without losing himself. He even argued with God about it. No, God, I won't eat that because maybe it's not right. So he, he couldn't necessarily even distinguish what was good, right, and true and biblical versus what was his culture. Culture's hard to discern sometimes, but it is something difficult. While it's difficult to discern, it is who you are. It is part of who you are. And when we think about culture in its multifaceted reality, like my culture as a Christian, as a woman, as a Puerto Rican, as a New Yorker, right? Which of these cultures is right when it opposes the other? Which one? Which one do I say that, that's the right answer? That, no, that's how I should respond in that situation. No, this is, this is what it, I should do. Can they both be right at the same time? Can I be a New Yorker and a Christian? Yes, <laughs> right? Like, what does, that, what does it look like, though, when my cultures are maybe clashing? Consider that engaging with someone from a different culture can actually help you know God better. Consider even getting to know me as a New Yorker, that I could actually know God in different ways from a city, inner city perspective. I have experienced him in different ways than maybe you have if you don't come from a city, inner city perspective, right? And so there's something you're missing out on when you don't cross culture with me. Who are you crossing culture with? Who are you culturally? How do those in your view, for example, view elders? What do you do if someone older walks in the room? What do you do if someone younger walks in the room? 
How do you treat authority or respect? These are all part of your culture, okay? What are your values? What's, what do you hold on to tight? What do you just not care about? You're like, whatever, don't, don't care, right? If you don't know these things, going into another culture would be like going to a zoo. You're going to learn about them, but you actually have nothing to bring to the table to share both ways culturally. When we behold ourselves, it opens a door to behold God more clearly. When we look deeply, because he is the creator who created us. And so when we look at ourselves, we're looking at the art piece that he designed, okay? He painted us, basically, he designed us. And it provides an opportunity to even engage better cross-culturally with others. We bring all of who God made us to be and therefore can better appreciate all of who God made me to be, made them to be, made who he is himself. So who is the us and who is the them in your life? How often have you engaged cross-culturally and why have you not? Start assessing who you are because who you are is going to be the person that goes cross-culturally and how they see you is important to how receptive they may actually be to the gospel. And that'll lead us into our next time. Thank you. So thank you all for being with me. This time we want to do some Q&A, some questions, um, and we'll have Christina lead us in that time. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. Thank Good you so you. much for sharing yeah. with us today. I uh, personally have so many questions, but the students <laughs> as well do. So sure. uh, we're going to share some of those and ask you. Okay. The first one um, is when looking at Old Testament cultural division contrasted with Jesus's message of a diverse kingdom, how can we better understand unified diversity within Christianity? Oh, starting off easy. I huh? know. I oh know. my goodness. I like, Maybe yeah, no, you're <laughs> fine. Oh, wow. Well, I think I think there's a reality in the time, right? Time difference. Um, I think Jesus Jesus doesn't just speak about uh, unity and diversity, like in John 17, where he's praying that to the Father that we would be one as He is one, right? But I think that I think you see diversity in the Old Testament as well, like. In Genesis, when we were created, we were created differently. I think male and female were created, right? Like the, you see the diversity that God has in how he creates and who he creates. And even that he, Acts 17, 23, like says that he, he basically divided the world. You see like the places of the world and then that he placed us in those places and at those times. And so obviously God being like, over time, I think that in, even if you look at the Old Testament, you can see his desire for diversity while, the, while you see his heart specifically for maybe the, the Jews, right? You could get really specific, well, that ethnic specific group. Well, in Acts 2, the Jews actually were already everywhere. And so even the Jews had various ethnic cultural realities. Like if you look at uh, Genesis really 1 through 12, if you read it really well, where you'll see like in Noah's Ark or even before that where you see... Um, the Tower of Babel, right? The differences of people groups were real all throughout Scripture, not just in the New Testament. And, and even beyond that, the, uni the unity of who God is, one God and still three different persons, Father, Son, Spirit. He is diverse in himself, and he is one. And so I think that's the perfect example yeah. for us. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, the, the next one's a little easier. Okay, hopefully. <laughs> uh, what in your life led you to your passion in this area of beholding yourself, and how can we share with others? Right, so I, I was born and raised in the Bronx of New York City. It is very culturally diverse, um, although has its majority culture pockets, right? And so by majority culture, I mean majority of that space. So in the Bronx, there's a lot of Caribbeans, a whole lot of Caribbeans. Um, you get a few like West Africans and uh, that's probably your two major like groups. Those are your majority groups. And then you'd have some minority groups in there. But I mean, I grew up, in, in elementary school, like 
singing the national anthem, the Puerto Rican national anthem, and the black national anthem mm -hmm. at our assemblies. Like that's just what we did because we were all in that space. Mm -hmm. And so I knew what diversity was-ish, um, but I also was a very much like ethnocentric New Yorker. Like I was also very much about my New York world and I felt like the world came to me so I didn't really need to know. And it wasn't until I got to college, even growing up in the Bronx where it was very poor, I'd seen the, the poor, like the poverty gap I had seen the educational gap, like using books that my dad probably used at the very same school, um, but I had not yet seen the religious gap until I went away to college and went out of state and I saw some Christians who didn't look like me and I understood a little bit more about what they believed and I, crossing culture, I got to learn more things about who God was and I thought, wow, there's so many people who don't yet know that. And so I start, it made me view myself. Who am I as a Christian? Yeah. Do I believe the same thing? So it, it forced me to understand myself just moving to another state and then start to understand them. And so that's why the idea of like beholding self, beholding others, all for the sake of being able to make this message available so that there is no spiritual gap. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So the last question is, what has helped you share your faith in a place like New York? And on the flip side, how can someone in a non-diverse culture step outside and, and share their faith? Well, let me answer the second part first. Actually, I think we're all from non-diverse, I think we're all from diverse cultures. Like if we, if we really look uh, lineage back, like looking, looking at Luke 3, right? They give the whole genealogy of Jesus, like going back so many people. Looking at the Old Testament in Ezra, we see going back so many fathers. Like why is that put into our scriptures that we would read forever mm -hmm. if it was not important? I think it's very important that we know our ancestors, we know from who we come, we know our heritage, because I think there's things that are passed down that we may think is just normal life. Right. But we actually all have ethnic identity and we all have ethnic cultures. And so sometimes we don't know them because they are so long ago, but I think there's also new cultures that we are jumping into or adapting to that we could also learn about. And it's in knowing those things that we're able to share the gospel. So in New York City, for example, being able to share my faith is, it means first off starting very authentically myself. Um, New Yorkers can tell real quick if you're being fake, like it's not, they're not about it, don't got time for it. Like be real with me, right? Yeah. So if we're on a train station, we're in a train together and somebody comes on the train and they're kind of sharing something kind of shady about like what they think about God. And it, maybe it, I remember one time it actually having to do with um, this man was wearing a white robe and he was calling all young 16 year old females to be part of his religion. And me and the woman next to me were like, mm -mm, this dude is not an, of any faith. This is not faith. This is like, mm -hmm. we need to call the cops or something. <laughs> and so we had a really good conversation on, well, what is faith? Or what do you believe about faith? Because we both authentically responded yes. to what we were witnessing. We were bold enough to just engage over it, to kind of laugh together and like, kind of be a little awkward about it and to mm -hmm. just inquire like do you think this could be real why would you say no and I mean she wasn't a Christian but we had such a deep like significant conversation that I'll remember forever because of that so I think using even just that was my New York culture just being able to kind of talk about what we saw but it could it could go into any other culture any other ethnic culture any other type of identity culture one can use to bridge the gospel yeah, I love that you said that. I think we just like drop that mask or mm -hmm. that shield that we have and we're mm -hmm. just like, this is who I am. This is what I believe. And that person can meet you at that same place and then mm -hmm. you can have real conversations and learn from each other and mm -hmm. learn about each other. And right. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like that. knowing that f being the fish in water, sometimes you don't know what you look like yeah. or you don't know that there's water around you. You're just like, I'm a fish, I'm a fish, <laughs> but there's water around you. Like, what is this culture you're in? Yeah. What are you doing that maybe you think is normal or natural? Uh, but if you, if you can, you can use that normal or natural and engage with someone differently, you'll see it's not so normal or natural to them. And so then what there is true about God. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah. I love Sorry. that. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I really appreciate you talking today. I'm sure they do as well. So thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And then, yeah, good luck. Okay. <laughs>